It's another rainy day in the neighborhood, and we are comparing the 21.8 Z lens with the good old 21.8 G. Yes, if you want to ask us where we are, we're in England. Just look at this weather. <laughs> to be prepared for lots of soggy looking shots today, but we're gonna do a little bit of a comparison between these because we've been talking about wide angles a lot recently. That's and right. This was the next one on the list, so there we go. Exactly, so some nice astrophotography. I'm sure we can see some Milky Way. <laughs> Exit stage right. <laughs> So we've had a little play with the 20 now, and uh, it's very easy to think that this lens can be pigeonholed just for landscape and architecture. Yeah. But I think it's more creative. If you're Becky, you can use it for macro photography. If you like me, I like to do a bit of a documentary street life portraiture like this, but you have to get really, really close. And it can get quite creative. Yeah, exactly. So don't just think that a 20 mil wide angle lens is just for those people who do astro work or just for landscape photographers. It has many, many more uses than that. That's true. But if you get something like this, you may want to practice it and you may want to discover yourself which type of photography works best for it or which angles you want to shoot with. Speaking of disciplining yourself with something like a 20mm, I had the 21.8G for a long time, paired that with my D750 uh, and D850 when I was shooting with DSLRs. And it was, for me, a really, really good option if I wanted to go to a particular location. I took it to Canterbury with me, I took it to Venice, and to get those very wide shots at a slightly different field of view to what people are usually used to seeing. So it was quite enlightening. Okay, so if you're disciplined, so it's three sets of five reps for the first two weeks, <laughs> and then you can increase the sets. <laughs> um, but I will also say that I used it for um, events and weddings because I was not a 14 to 24 owner, mm -hmm. and there was a period where I would use that accompanied with my 24 120, and it would work just to get those slightly wider shots in as well. So it is pretty versatile, more versatile than you would think. Why would you pick? A 20 mil over, let's say, a wide angle zoom. First of all, it's the very wide aperture 1.8. You don't get that with the zooms. So again, if you're an astrophotographer, you need that 1.8. It will do better than 2.8. So that's number one. Then being a prime lens, it is better corrected in terms of distortion. And it's also sharper because it has to do less things. It has to go from 14 to 30 millimeter focal distance, let's say. Weight, size, overall optical performance, and the wide aperture. However, at the expense of it being a prime lens, so you can't zoom in and zoom out on your image. And there you have it. So Becky, mm. if you already got a 20 millimeter 1.8 GF mount lens for your lovely DSLR, mm -hmm. would you buy a Z native version when you upgrade to a mirrorless camera? I personally wouldn't for the simple reason that you're not getting a massive leap in image quality. Both the 21.8G and the 21.8Z are superb lenses and you're getting small improvements for the extra price. However, if you are planning on completely transitioning over to Z and you want to do away with the FTZ adapter essentially, you obviously can't get better than the Z lens. Well, thank you. You just saved me some money. I better go and spend it to something else. Well, it's going to be another lens, let's be honest. <laughs> Saying all that, if you are looking for a sharp lens with better corners, less distortion, less vignetting, and better autofocus, although we honestly don't really look for autofocus performance in a wide angle lens, then really the Z21.8 S is it. It is the best that you can get in that focal length. And honestly, no one is going to judge you for upgrading to it if you decide to go that way. In fact, we will encourage it. The thing is, right, some of us don't use zoom lenses. So if you're looking at prime lenses to use, normally people say get 28, 50 and 85. 28 for some people may not be wide enough. And then you may consider as some ultra wide angle prime. So 20 in the absence of any other wide angle lenses, 20 may fit quite nicely for this type of photography. So if you think it's something like 20, 28 to 35, so you choose that, and then 50, 85, you're pretty much covered on the lens. And then you can have one of the 24 to 200 and throw away all the primes. <laughs> You 
you really need to learn how to angle the wide angle lens because there's so much in frame that you really have to be careful not to put too much stuff but at the same time you can be really creative so learning how to use this lens is i think the most important thing and for me personally i just stick on black and white profile and everything looks amazing with it so one thing that I quite like with these 20 mils and what I use the 21.8G for a lot was to get close details, but then to see what was in the background. So when you're doing sort of architecture or you're, you know, wandering around a city, you want context with your subjects. I'm not just doing, it's not my typical flowers and fungi. <laughs> still a close up. <laughs> it's still a close up because that's how I view the world. It's like from this distance. It's my short-sightedness that comes into play. So I do find it that for this particular case, it's a little bit too distorted. Right. And something like 24 or 28 you know, will do. But then I can't fit the whole building with something like 24 or 28, or I'd have to walk really, really far away. So in this case, I can actually don't need to go that far, I can feel the things in, still take a shot, and it's going to be sharper than any ultra wide angle zooms. So if you look this way, then the F mount version looks smaller. However, keep in mind that you will need to put an F to that adapter on it, and it's actually on that camera will make it bigger. Now weight wise, they are about the same, but again, once you add F to that adapter to the F mount lens, it will be a little bit heavier. But again, it's something that uh, you hardly will ever notice. So if you already have F-mount version and you wonder about the bulk with FTZ adapter, actually it's going to be about the same. So, you know, 20 mil is not going to improve on that. However, you need to think about sharpness, autofocus performance and the corners. One thing that I find really useful about having a super wide angle lens with a wide aperture is that when you get into spaces where there's not much light, you can really take advantage of having something like f1.8, which you can't do so much if you're using a zoom lens, which say has f4 for its maximum aperture. I'm looking at you 14 to 30 f4. <laughs> but it means that you can get very, very close because the nice close focusing distance on the lens, lots and lots of light in and still fit lots of features. Something that not all zoom lenses can do for you, which is why I say go for a prime if you can. We hope you found this review video helpful. We've been here at Polds and Lacey National Trust in Surrey. So if you want to pay them a visit, you definitely should. It is a beautiful area to shoot in. And if you like this video, give us a like and a subscribe. Yeah, if you found this super useful, there's a super thanks button as well. And if there's any other lenses you'd like to see us review, let us know in the comments below. Voila. Et voila.